Good morning. My name is Heidi Dixon and I'm a chaplain for Illumin Health and our mission is to light the way and make the most of what is. Uh, it is Friday, July 31st and um, this is sunshine for your soul. And so I have to be honest, I uh, am supposed to have a guest with me today whom I was really looking forward to introducing you to and for you to meet him, but he texted me this morning and said he had to go out of town unexpectedly. Um, but instead of him telling you about himself, I'm going to tell you a little about him and why um, I was eager for you to meet him. When I realized that this show was going to be a weekly thing, uh, a few people came to mind that I wanted to share with you who have been a continual inspiration in my life, and uh, he was one of the handful. So, um, so Jonas is not here with me today, but he's here in spirit, and I'll be sharing um, something of his with you in just a moment. Um, but the reason I want to talk about him and, and the title of our post, which he did not know what it was, but uh, is a man with hope in his face. And um, that reference comes from this old book I've referenced once before, Life in the Heights by Reverend Jowett from the 1920s. And he says this, is there anything of which the world is in greater need just now than men and women who are clothed in the shining glory of unquenchable hopes? The world is confused and disillusioned and depressed. Our ideals have been smitten and they are like quenched and broken lamps. And therefore, of what unspeakable worth are men and women who have somehow got mysterious supplies of oil and whose lamps have not gone out in the gusty night? I was reading a letter the other day from the city of Vienna where pessimism hangs over everything like a dull and heavy pall of smoke. If a man with hope in his face walks down the street, people will stop and look at him because he is such an exception to the rule. And that describes Jonas, so I'm so sorry he's not here um, to be with us. Um, but Jonas, uh, I met, he was a, um, a patient um, when I was a hospital a chaplain in the hospital and uh, when I met him he um, was getting ready to have surgery on a skull flap um, that was infected and um, he needed surgery for that and um, he's on dialysis three days a week which is why we were coming at 10 in the morning today because we wanted to meet uh, before his dialysis rather than after when you can feel a little crummy so uh, anyway so I just so admire the way he, all of the things he's come through, which were through decisions um, that he made that isolated him from his family, that he just fully owns and is honest about, which is one of the things I love about him. Um, and so, so he's come through so much and he still faces so much, you know, as he waits for the bus three days a week to do dialysis for probably four hours at a time. And he just uh, finds his strength in his faith and, uh, and I find his virtue so inspiring uh, that he doesn't even realize that he has. So humility and his perseverance and his patience and his optimism. And, and so I asked him if I could go ahead and read his poem for you. Because, and he said, yes. He said, God's word needs to be spread. And so this is called Lost It All and was written by... Mr. Jonas Garcia. I remember when I was on top of the world, I thought I had it all, but the almighty God allowed me to lose it and I felt like I hit a brick wall. I had the house, the family, and the wife, plus the money made me feel like a king. But I let the devil enter my life and I hit rock bottom when I sold my wedding ring. I believe in God's word when it says that he can give you everything and he can also take it away. And I'm grateful that he didn't give me what I deserved. And I hope I never see that day. The family I have still cares for me. And I know that it's only possible by God's grace. 
because I recall when I caused them so much pain, they couldn't stand the sight of my face. I lost it all because I chose to serve the devil 24 seven. But now God is on my side and I know that my treasures are up in heaven. God's word says that Jesus learned from suffering and that's what happened to me. And I thank him for opening my eyes and his love I can truly see. The world is always arrested by the quiet and splendid achievement of difficult things. To see sorrow born with hopeful courage. To see disappointment met with sweetness. To see the long uncertain day endured with patience. And to hear songs in the night. All these make the world stand still in wonder. So against my better judgment, I'm going to sing a song for you. Uh, it's, uh, it's a song I used to sing for my patients in the hospital a lot because it was the one song that I knew from memory. And I think it captures um, the struggles that we have in life, the suffering and the endurance and, and the hope in the end. So this is called Up to the Mountain. I'm not sure who wrote it. Patty Griffin is who I heard sing it first. And um, so I, I hope it goes well. <clears throat> I went up to the mountain because you asked me to. See all around me, everywhere. I could see all around me, everywhere. Sometimes I feel like. I've never been nothing but tired And I'll be working till the day I expire Sometimes I lay down no more I do, but then I go on again because you ask me to. Some days I look down, afraid I will fall. Over the mountain, 
the peaceful valley few come to know I may never get ever in this lifetime but soon or later it's there So for me, that song best sums up one of my favorite scripture verses, which is Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. Not only that, but we even boast of our afflictions, knowing that affliction produces endurance, and endurance proven character, and proven character, hope. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. So do not move one inch from your position of hope. Thank you for your time today. God be with us.